Okay, so we will finish this section today, or at least that's my hope. Um, some of the material in this section is repetition. It's stuff we've seen before, but that's not the end of the world. In fact, kind of the opposite, I guess. If something's important, you should be seeing it more than once. Although I've expressed some ambivalence so how important this is. We can talk about the sines and cosines of special angles. Those being pi over three, pi over six, pi over four. And just to keep this from being total repetition of stuff we've already done, we can show where the sine and the cosine come from, because I don't think we've given that information. So let's start with the odd man out, as it were, pi over three and I actually think we might have um, seen where this comes from, but let's look at a pi over four radian angle on the unit circle. So this is a unit circle, therefore that's length one. This is angle pi over four. This side of the triangle is the cosine of theta. This side of the triangle is the sine of theta. And the key observation here is that this angle, this triangle is isosceles. And both the legs are the same, so the cosine of theta equals the sine of theta. <laughs> and now, depending on how you want to think about it, you can say you're using the Pythagorean identity, or you can say you're just using the Pythagorean theorem, but either way, the cosine squared plus the sine squared is one. And now because the cosine and the sine are the same, we can say that the cosine squared plus the cosine squared is one. And this addition is the same as multiplication by two. We've got two of them. We can divide both sides by two. And now we can take the square root of both sides. Uh, this has two, this being this, has two solutions, but we're in the first quadrant, the cosine has to be positive. So we're taking the positive square root. And the square root of one half is not what you were asked to memorize. There are these conventions. I mean, they seem largely arbitrary to me, but we can rewrite this as the square root of one over the square root of two. The square root of a fraction is the fraction 
of the square root. And then as I was talking about conventions that seem a little arbitrary, I have no idea what harm is supposed to befall us because we have a square root in the denominator, but by grand and ancient tradition, we rationalize. That is to say, we multiply by one, so we're not changing the fraction. But we get rid of the square root in the denominator. And this is the cosine, but the cosine equals the sine. And just out of sort of habit, I wrote the cosine of theta and the sine of theta, but theta here is a specific number. We're looking at pi over four. So the cosine of pi over four, the square root of two over two, and the sine of pi over four is the square root of two over two. Then we did pi over three and pi over six. And these arguments are a little less, I won't say obvious because I don't know that this is obvious, but they're even less um, straightforward. That's a good way of saying it. Let's take a look at pi over six. And we'll draw this on the unit circle. Here's pi over six. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line down. <clears throat> and now we have a triangle that is not a right triangle. And I don't know if my art's the best. Well, that's a lie. I know it isn't, but this triangle up here in the first quadrant and this triangle down here in the second quadrant are the same triangle. I mean, there's a fancy word for that. I forget what it is, but this side up here and this side down here that I've marked with a single dash, those are the same lengths. Of course, they share that side in common. And their hypotenuses are the same. Their hypotenuses are both radii of the circle. They're both one. And these angles are the same. This is a right angle. That's a right angle. This is pi over six. This is also pi over six. This must be pi over three. I say that because there are pi radians in a triangle and a right angle is pi over two radians. So if you have pi over two and pi over six, you need pi over three to make pi. And this is pi over three for the exact same reason. Oh, 
Okay. Let's now, I know I sort of, the way it's drawn, there are two right triangles sitting next to each other, but there's also a big lawn right triangle. Let's look at it for a moment. This triangle is equilateral. And why is that? Well, this angle here is pi over three. This angle here is pi over three. This angle here is pi over six, plus another pi over six. So it's pi over three. So if the angles are all the same, the sides are all the same. Again, I don't know how well most people sort of retain high school geometry, but this is a true statement. And because this is an equilateral triangle, the sides are all the same. So that side is one. And what I really care about, now that's, oops, didn't, didn't know I was going to delete the entire side. But going back to that triangle in the first quadrant, it's Vertical side is half of one, so it's one half. And now, again, trying to just clean this up a little, so it's a little less cluttered. That gives us one of the trig functions. Um, This side of the triangle is the cosine of pi over six. This side of the triangle is the sine of pi over six. So the sine of pi over six is one half. And now it's not totally arbitrary that we're covering this material again in this section. Because if we know that the sine of pi over six is one half, and we want to know the cosine of pi over six, well, how can we find that cosine? What do we have that relates the sine and the cosine? Tangent. The tangent does relate the sine and the cosine, but it's not necessarily what we want in this situation because we don't know what the tangent of pi over six is. I'm thinking of an equality or an identity. Oh, if that. The Pythagorean. The Pythagorean identity says that for every angle, no matter what it is, the sine of that angle squared plus the cosine of that angle squared equals one. So one of these we know, the other we want. The sine is one half, so one half squared 
Thus, the cosine squared equals one, one half squared is one fourth, We'll subtract one fourth from both sides. Uh, when we get a common denominator, one is four over four. So we subtract one fourth and we get three fourths. And again, this is an equation with two solutions, the positive square root and the negative square root. But we're using the fact that, um, that this is an angle in the first quadrant and the cosine and the side are both positive. So we only need the positive square root and the square root of a fraction is the fraction of the square roots. And we get what we had better, what we knew we'd better get, because we have seen this before, so we knew ahead of time what our answer should be. The cosine of pi over six is the square root of three over two. I don't want to be monotonous. So as far as pi over three, it's the same numbers except that they're reversed. And I'll just sort of point us in the direction of where this comes from. We've created this triangle. We know that this angle is pi over six. So we know that that angle is pi over three. Again, there are 180 degrees in a triangle and 180 degrees is pi radians. So we know this because it makes the angles add up to pi. And we know this side is one half, So erasing that angle, what do we know? Well, we've got now one half is the adjacent side. If we're looking at pi over three, one is the hypotenuse. The cosine of pi over three is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse is one half. So the cosine of pi over three is one half. And then you use the Pythagorean identity to find the side, just like we did here. So, again, that's in theory old material. We've already looked at pi over six, pi over three, pi over four. 
but it gives us a good opportunity to use the Pythagorean identity for something. And if we're being forced to memorize the Pythagorean identity, it's nice to think that it has uses. So, at this point, we have a few scatter shot topics. Before we settle on the topic that's going to take the rest of the class period. I mean, the vast majority of sines and cosines you cannot take by hand. And again, I mean, I don't think that's some kind of enormous problem. I mean, the vast majority of square roots you can't take by hand. The vast majority of logarithms you can't take by hand. That's the vast majority of exponentials. If you've got e to the x, you can't evaluate them by hand. So, I mean, I don't, it's not some kind of enormous problem. It's sort of what technology is there for. Where, here we go. So, three of the trade functions get dedicated buttons. There's a sine button and a cosine button and a tangent button. And I'm showing you this TI-84, but if you get like a $15 um, scientific calculator, it's probably, it might just have the sine and cosine and not have tangent, but this is a pretty typical configuration. And, you know, if we want the sine of 0. 0.47 radians, we just double check and make sure we're in radian mode. We are not. We hit radian, we press enter to select this. Then second mode gets us out. And the sine of 0. 0.47 or seven radians is this, rounded to 10 decimals is that, rounded to enough decimals for basically any conceivable use in the real world. And if we want degrees, Select degrees, the cosine of 47 degrees, 0. 0.681, and then some other stuff. I'm going, we're going to be spending a lot of time in radians, so I'm going to go back to that. So we can evaluate sines and cosines and tangents. The tangent of pi divided by four. We can evaluate sines and cosines and tangents on our calculator. If we need another trig function, we'd have to um, use the, it's like if we wanted the secant, we'd have to type one over the cosine, but we'll get to that in due course. The next section of the textbook is secant, cosecant, cotangent. So we won't worry too much about those for now. domains and ranges of the sine and the cosine. So, 
So, let's not just state the domains and the ranges. Let's remind ourselves what these represent. The domain of a function is the allowable inputs. It's, so the domain of the sign is the numbers whose sign you can take. The domain of the cosine is the numbers whose cosine you can take. And here is where our using the unit circle comes through for us. We can take the sine and the cosine of any number, whether it's big or small, whether it's positive or negative, we can draw an angle on the unit circle and we can look at the X and the Y coordinates. The range See. Who here remembers what the range is? I mean, just in general, what the range of a function means. Isn't it like the difference between like biggest and like smallest number? Um, that's I think you're thinking of the amplitude. Um, and that is something we're going to look at in the next section, but we're not quite there yet. So in this specific context, the range is the, let's call it outputs. The numbers that the sign and cosine can equal. So let's go, I mean, we could just do this on the whiteboard, but Sure, everyone prefers nice graphs to my scribbles. So here, though I prefer if we could zoom in just a little faster. Oof, monkey paw curls. There we go. So let's think about the cosine. Remember that the cosine is the X coordinate of a point on the unit circle. So 0.985 is the cosine of some angle because it's a point on the unit circle. Negative 0.71 is the cosine of some angle. Well, if we look at these X coordinates, we are going from negative one and then the X coordinates increase until we get to positive one. So if the cosine is the X coordinate and the X coordinates are going from negative one to positive one, then the cosine goes from negative one to positive one. The Y coordinates are very similar. The Y coordinates, this is the sine now, the Y coordinates go down to negative one. And they go up to positive one. So the sort of 
way you'd write that is the numbers between negative one and one. And what this is telling you in practical terms is that, for example, the equation, the sine of x equals one seventh has a solution. We might not at this point know what the solution is. We might not know how to find it, but one seventh is in the ring. So the sign can equal one seventh. On the other hand, the sign of X equals 1.42 has no solution. 1.42 is not in this interval. So the sign can never equal it. Any questions so far? So we should talk about reference angles yet. From my point of view, I think uh, 20 minutes is about right for this. Some textbooks kind of obsess over the idea. But the idea is that if you have an angle in the second or third or fourth quadrant, you can try to find the sine or the cosine by using an angle in the first quadrant. And let me illustrate how this would work with an example by looking at the sine and then also the cosine of three pi divided by four. So let me draw the unit circle. And let me draw three pi divided by four. It should look something like that. It's in the second quadrant. And we're looking for the X and the Y coordinate of that point. The X coordinate will be the cosine. The Y coordinate will be the sine. And that angle is three pi divided by four. Okay, so let me ask a question. If that angle is three pi divided by four, what's the other angle that I just put on the board? What is this angle here. Could it be pi divided by four? It could, it is. There are pi radians in a straight line. So if we've already used three pi over four to get here, that leaves that angle to be pi divided by four. And now I'm going to erase the angle we're actually interested in. Startlingly enough. And I'm going to draw Pi 
divided by four in the first quadrant. And then I'm going to create a right triangle like so, and a right triangle like so. And these right triangles are similar, is I believe the technical term. Their angles are the same. Their hypotenuse is the same because their hypotenuse is are both one. And if two triangles have the same side and the, the same angle, sorry, and one of their sides is the same, then all of their sides are the same. So those sides are the same. And those sides are the same. And now the thing is that it's just unclutter thing slightly. The thing is that I know what this side is. This side is the cosine of pi over 4, which is the square root of 2 over 2. And I know what this side is. This side is the sine of pi over 4, which as it happens, is also the square root of two over two. So now I want the X and the Y coordinate of this point. Well, can one of you give me the Y coordinate? Let's start with that. Would it be zero? Or, or it, would it be like the ones that are up touching like the circle? Yeah, I, I'm looking for the ones up here touching the circle. And what I'm hoping we can recognize is that because these triangles are the same, this distance and this distance are the same. So this vertical distance is the square root of two over two units. This vertical distance is also the square root of two over two units. This horizontal distance is the square root of two over two units. This horizontal distance is the square root of two over two units. But you're going in the negative direction. So the X coordinate and the Y coordinate of that point in the second quadrant are the same as the X coordinate and the Y coordinate of the point in the first quadrant, except for a, uh, here's where I wish we had called the sine function something different. Um, they're the same except for a positive and negative symbol. Let's put it that way. Um, this x-coordinate is negative, whereas this x-coordinate
is positive. Let's try to take this idea and beat it into a sort of general shape. And in spite of what I said, you'll probably spend some more time on this on Friday. But if we have an angle in the second quadrant, an angle in the third quadrant, or an angle in the fourth quadrant, well, this angle in the second quadrant has what we call a reference angle, which is that angle there. And actually, this is going to be very crowded and convoluted if I try to do all the quadrants at once. Let's just look at an angle in the second quadrant. If this angle is theta, then this angle in the second quadrant is going to be pi minus theta. And we say that theta has pi minus theta as its reference. And the signs and the cosines of an angle and a reference angle are always the same, except that maybe one of them is positive while the other is negative. In this particular case, the signs are going to be the same. As a matter of fact, this is actually actually something we put on the board a few um, a few days ago. It's um, the so-called co-function identity. The cosine Wait, no, it isn't. What the heck am I writing? Forget that ever happened. The signs are the same. Um, the signs are both positive in particular because um, one of them's in the first quadrant, one of them's in the second quadrant. The first and the second quadrant are both above the axes, axis, so the y-coordinates are the same. Then let me write this in a different order. The cosine of the angle we're actually interested in is going to be the negative cosine of the reference angle. So Let's do another example with this. Just maybe I'll try to stay on this frame so I'm not 
constantly having to go back and forth. Let's look at five pi divided by six. This is an angle in the second quadrant. It's reference angle pi minus five pi over six is going to be pi over six. The sine of five pi over six is the sine of the reference angle, the sine of pi over six is one half. The cosine of five pi over six is almost the cosine of the reference angle, except that it has a negative sign in front of it. Then the cosine of pi over six is the square root of three over two. This is material, it's on sort of the list of material, the ever growing list that I'm slightly ambivalent about in the sense that textbooks present it as a way of finding sines and cosines, but in the vast majority of cases, you're not going to be able to use a reference angle to find the sine or the cosine. You're going to have to use your calculator. I mean, say, we want the sine and the cosine of three. Well, three is somewhere in the second quadrant. The reference angle is pi minus three, which is about zero point fourteen. In. And then, of course, that doesn't help you at all because you don't know what the sine and the cosine of 0 0.14 is either. So um, you found the reference angle, but it's not useful in terms of actually finding the sine and the cosine. And, you know, outside of textbooks, where angles are carefully chosen to be, you know, pi over three, pi over six, or pi over four, that's going to be most situations. Reference angles won't actually help you. You'll need to just dig out your calculator. Be that as it may, it's very classic material. And whether that means it's important or whether that means that trigonometry facets have stagnated, I do not know. We did not finish this section. We will finish it up on Friday and start a new section, which I don't know if we'll have time to finish. But I will see you then. The homework's up. Sorry. It